This is a demo for Instock, which is our remnant management system. Currently, Instock comes in two modules. The main module is known as Instock Dashboard, which is what you can see here. And the second module is known as Instock Remnants AP, which is what AP looks like right here. And the difference between the two is uh, Dashboard is normally installed on an office computer, so they can have a uh, grand overview of all the remnants that are currently in the system. So you can see the material length, width, ID, and location. And there will also be a, a status for this remnant, uh, which we'll go over. There's uh, multiple statuses. And these are have been designed to prevent conflicts when there are maybe multiple users optimizing. And AP is meant for operators to have a more restricted access to the dashboard or to the, the database so that they can process jobs that involve remnants. So that includes jobs that produce remnants and jobs that consume remnants. So to start, I'm going to submit a few jobs to InStock. And the first one, we're going to do that through BlueCell, which is our optimizer. Uh, the general purpose, um, or how this will work, is that any remnants that get installed into a dashboard will be assigned a unique ID number here, and information about the remnant will be recorded here in these uh, corresponding columns, so length, width, grain, material. And when a remnant is submitted, uh, a bin usually will get assigned as well if that's been set up. Uh, one thing about bins is they are very flexible, so for users who may want to organize bins by material or maybe by dimensions, grain, anything like that, they can do so. Uh, since they are constructed by formulas, right here through this formulas window, you can put many restrict on, uh, restrictions on here and make it very specific for what material or what remnants go into what bins. Now, if we go to Blue Cell, I'm going to go ahead and submit a job to Dashboard, and uh, it'll show up in AP, and we'll just see how the typical workflow would be. So, going to Blue Cell, I've got parts here, and we're going to submit uh, parts of test mat material. It's going to be of a 25 by 20, quantity of 3, and another part of 15 by 10, also a quantity of 3. And this will be cut out of a full size sheet of 96 by 48 inches. And it's going to have a remnant parameter of 15 by 15. And what that just means is when Blusa optimizes, if it sees any scrap that's at least 15 inches by 15 inches, it will mark that as a remnant that we can reuse. So I'm going to optimize now. And here's the optimization. So here we see the three 25 by 20s and the three 15 by 10s. And blue cells determined that there are two scraps that we can reuse. And it's marked these as a remnant in green. So if this is a job that I want to keep and send to production, we can click this submit to install. So I'm going to first save this job. We'll call it install demo. So I'm going to go ahead and submit this job to InStock. We'll get the successfully submitted job. And again, we'll, we should see these two remnants within the database now. So if we go to Dashboard, and here we see the two remnants that uh, we found in the optimization, a 18 by 96 and a 20 by 21 of test mat and it's placed it in the bin test and also recorded the job that it came from which is the uh, same job that I called it in blue cell and you note here that this is a not yet produced status so the status of not yet produced simply means that this remnant does not exist and can't be used in the optimization yet uh, as soon as the job has been processed though by an operator and they say that that remnant has been made available, the status will switch to not yet, or excuse me, to available. 
and then they can be used in an optimization. So let's switch over to Remnant AP and we can see what an operator would see. So going over to AP, we'll just refresh that. Here we see the in stock demo job. So you'll note here that the mode is currently in idle, and that just means that no jobs are open right now. Um, a job is being worked on when it's been clicked here. So we'll click that, and the mode is now switched to production. Uh, production will indicate to the operator what he needs to do to work on this job. So when it goes into production, it means that he's actually making remnants. So that means he needs to take his material and uh, cut his parts, and then with these remnants, he should have these new ones, and he is supposed to check these into the remnant system. So to do so, he can go ahead and just click Select for each one to confirm that they've been made, and he can also change the bin if the in-stock bin is maybe full. he can manually change that. So we're going to switch it to catch all for now. And again, here's the not yet produced status. So what will happen is as soon as he's confirmed that these remnants have been made and that will be done when he clicks this done button and these remnants are checked off, that is going to switch that status to available. So we're going to go ahead and hit done. And you'll see here that the job is now clear. We're back in idle mode, so we're not working on a job anymore. And if we check that catch-all bin, we're going to see these two remnants in there now. So in stock demo, test mat, and again, the same dimensions. And now in available status. And we'll also see that reflected here. So these are now available. Now to show you how um, a remnant will get pulled from in stock into an optimization, I'm going to create a new job and I'm going to try to use one of these remnants and also have the job make a remnant too. So the, that'll be a job with two parts to it, a remnant that's going to be uh, consumed and a remnant that's going to be created. So if we go to blue cell and we start a new job, I'm going to go ahead and use the same sheet stock. So here we've got the 96 by 48 again, 15 by 15 uh, dimensions for uh, the remnant requirements. And I'm going to use a different set of uh, parts to get what I want. So this will be 18 by 18, and we'll do quantity of 5. And that should fit on that uh, 18 by 96 dimension remnant. And now we're going to create another part that shouldn't fit. This one should be too big for that. So we'll go ahead and hit optimize. And here Blue Cell did as I expected. And it took that 96 by 18 remnant that it found in the InStock database. And it fit all five parts on there. And if you check the next pattern, it couldn't find a remnant to fit the 40 by 40s so it took a full size sheet stock and it actually found that we can uh, fit another remnant on here from this scrap. So this job is pretty good so we can submit that to in stock so I'm going to go ahead and save that and we'll call it in stock demo 2. And now I'm going to submit this to in stock Now what I'll expect is this remnant, this 96 by 18, to actually go into reserve status. And what reserve status does is it prevents another job from trying to use this remnant, so there won't be any conflicts. And what I would also expect is this uh, 16 by 48 remnant to also be entered into in stock. So opening dashboard, we refresh. And it did exactly as I expected. So we've got the 18 by 96 remnant is now in reserve status. It didn't use that 20 by 21, still in and available. But it did enter a new remnant, the 48 by 16, and not yet produced. And it's in that test bin, and we can change that if we want. And if we do decide to change that, 
you can select the first one. And we'll give it a row and a column as this bin has been set up to have rows and columns. And here we'll see that the, this job came from the Instock Demo 2 and this remnant has been reserved and it's being reserved for Instock Demo 2. So we'll sit, hit Save Changes since we did make some changes there. And now we'll go down to Remnants AP to see what the operator will see. So once we hit Refresh, there is our new job Instock Demo 2 and pending status. Again, we're in idle mode, so we'll click Select. And you'll see here the mode did not go into uh, production, but into retrieval. And what retrieval means is the job needs a remnant to be pulled from inventory in order to be completed. So here, it'll say which remnant. So it says we need the 18 by 96. It's in that reserve status. And here the operator can uh, collect, excuse me, select the remnant and he can hit done and what that'll do is it'll switch the reserve status to consumed and consumed just means that this remnant is no longer present in the system anymore it's been used already we hit that we check that remnant now there it is it went to consumed now if the operator did make a mistake there is an undo button And there, if we go back to Instock Demo 2, it's still in retrieval, and it undid what he, the operator did. Now, if for some reason this remnant was actually lost, uh, and the operator could not find it, or maybe it was misplaced, the operator can ask the system to look for a replacement remnant that is about these dimensions. And to do that, we can right-click it and ask it to suggest a replacement. And in our system, we don't have a suitable remnant found. So we'll just hit done and process it normally. Now we see here that the Instock Demo 2 did not clear from our system, and that's because there are two parts of this job. There is the retrieval to get the new remnant, but now there is also a new remnant being made, the original uh, 18, excuse me, 16 by 48. So that part is still part of this job, and that's why this is still here. So if we click it, the mode will change appropriately to production, and we see here this is uh, a new remnant, and it's the 48 by 16. And we can select that, and this remnant uh, is going into this rem j05 bin and it's in not yet produced status. So as soon as the operator hits done, that remnant will switch status to available. So now the uh, this remnant has now set, been set to consumed, and this one is now available for the next optimization. Now with uh, remnants AP, the operator can also do some inventory here. So he can check these remnants to make sure that they are still in these bins. Um, if they are not actually in these bins anymore, so for instance, uh, this remnant went missing, or maybe it was thrown out or misplaced, the operator can right-click it and do remove, and that will change the status to remove, uh, which functionally is the same as consumed. It just means that that remnant is no longer there. Now, um, if there are any remnants that are perhaps created uh, manually rather than through an optimizer like Blue Cell, the operator can still enter that without going to the dashboard to do so, as the dashboard does have a manual entry option here, as I just did. So if he wants to enter a new remnant, he can do so by going to Action and Manual Entry. And he can enter in the necessary information, um, like the dimensions, uh, what bin he put it in, and the material. Now, if the operator actually wants to find a specific remnant, and again, it's not through Blue Cell, uh, so it's for maybe a job that he has that does not need optimization. He just is looking for a remnant to uh, make up for a different job. He can have in stock look for a replacement. 
So here he can do a search for a remnant. So if he's got the ID, he can search for a remnant and ask it uh, where it is. Or he can enter in a certain dimension, so uh, width, length, grain, and material. So if we were to look for a remnant, uh, here we'll pull up this one. So for instance, this is 48 by 16. He'd like to know where it is. He can enter in the information about it. So we'll go here. And here it told it it was in uh, bin REMJ05. And he can remove it at, from this point. So that concludes the demonstration for InStock. Uh, hopefully that answers any questions you have. But if you do have any more questions or you'd like to find out more about InStock, you can visit our website, uh, www.eurosoftinc.com. Or you can email us at sales at eurosoftinc.com. Thanks.